It was 1987 when DJ Yella got together with friends from his Compton, California neighborhood to form the rap group NWA. At the time, none of them could have imagined that their group would one day become one of the most famous rap groups in the history of music. For over 30 years, the world has gotten to know the story of NWA and their path to success. For DJ Yella, his path was filled with the highs of platinum albums and six-figure checks to the lows of bankruptcy and homelessness. But with all his ups and downs in life, his loyalty to NWA never changed. DJ Yella was born Antoine Caraby on December 11, 1961 in Compton, California. He was born the second youngest of eight brothers and sisters. At the age of four, his parents got a divorce and his mother moved him and his siblings into a small three-bedroom house. DJ Yell and his brothers and sisters shared rooms, sleeping on double and triple bunk beds. And all 10 members of his family shared the one bathroom that was in the house. DJ Yella's mom did her best to support her family, working long night shifts as a nurse to make sure everyone was taken care of. But his family was still poor. So poor that DJ Yella got his first job at 12 years old, making $1 an hour so he could buy himself clothes and lunches at school. But Yella was never really interested in school. He preferred being in his neighborhood playing football in the streets with friends or racing mini bikes and go-karts. He also played Little League Baseball for five years and would have kept playing through high school but had to quit because the game started interfering with his job schedule. Even though his job didn't make him much money, he always kept working. But it wasn't just for the school clothes. With a job, he could afford to hook up his bicycle with custom show lights, sound systems, and speakers, a hobby he continued doing all throughout his childhood years. But DJ Yella's childhood also had times of tragedy. In 1974, his older brother was accidentally shot and killed by a neighborhood friend who was playing with a gun. Not long after that, during a trip to a community swimming pool, he experienced a form of abuse that no kid should have to go through, an experience that changed him forever. And because he didn't have anyone at the time to talk to about it, he kept it to himself and became more quiet than he ever was before. But where his words may have been quiet, his music skills were loud. In the seventh grade, Yella got his first music gig DJing for his brother's wedding. He wasn't a real DJ yet, but had learned about music from watching his older brother's band practice in the family garage. During practice, DJ Yella's brothers would let him play around with the drums for fun. But when they realized Yella had real musical talent, they asked him to become a drummer for their band. This experience led DJ Yella to becoming the lead drummer of his Compton High School marching band. After graduating from high school, Yella got more serious about DJing and with his musical background, it came easy to him. But the name DJ Yella wasn't his first DJ name. When he was just starting out, he went by the name The Master Rocker and would DJ at house parties around Compton. Then, in 1981, he walked into a Los Angeles nightclub that was owned by a man named Alonzo Williams. Alonzo offered Yella his first real DJing job at the nightclub, making $50 a night. Yella changed his DJ name from the Master Rocker to DJ Yella and quickly became the hottest DJ at the club. One night, the club flew in New York rapper Curtis Blow and his DJ. Curtis Blow's DJ was the first person to show DJ Yella how to scratch a record. After learning the new technique, Yella became the first DJ on the West Coast to scratch a record on the turntables live. When people saw him do that, he became even more popular. The name DJ Yella got bigger around LA, which meant the DJing offers got bigger. He worked at radio stations and got a job at Motown scratching on their artists' records. He also made his own scratching mixtapes and sold them at swap meets and record stores around the city. But Yella stayed working as a DJ at the club too. The club had perks that other DJing gigs didn't. Women, a lot of women. Almost every night, DJ Yella met a new girl, sometimes two or three girls. Working at the club, Yella got to party and have fun, but also do a job he loved to do. 
After two years of DJing at the club, DJ Yella met Dr. Dre, who became the newest DJ at the nightclub. Dr. Dre, DJ Yella, Clientele, Lonzo, and later member Shakespeare would go on to form the group The World Class Wrecking Crew. In a small studio in Lonzo's garage, Yella and Dre worked as a production team, producing original music for the group's 1985 album World Class and 1986 album Wrapped in Romance. Although songs on both albums did well, their most recognized hit was their song Turn Off the Lights, released in 1987. But while touring and producing music for the World Class Wrecking Crew, DJ Yella never really focused on the amount of money the group was bringing in. He just knew that for his part, he made $125 per show and $15,000 for their second album. But being young and not knowing the music business, he didn't know this was way less than he should have been making. When he finally did realize, he left the group. Yella and Dre both left. Working at the club together and being in the group, they had become close friends, close as brothers. They shared an apartment and would always be together, DJing, making mixtapes, or working on music for the group's albums. In 1987, after leaving the World Class Wrecking Crew, Dr. Dre introduced DJ Yella to Easy e Easy e had started the label Ruthless Records, and Dre was working with him producing the song Boys in the Hood. Dre suggested Yella join their movement, and a couple weeks later, Easy e Dr. Dre, MC Ren, DJ Yella, Ice Cube, and Arabian Prince formed the rap group N.W.A. Arabian Prince would later leave the group. N.W.A. set up a recording studio in Easy es mother's garage, and DJ Yella and Dr. Dre were back again, working together as a production team, producing all the projects for Ruthless Records, including Easy es album and both original N.W.A. albums. See, Dre, Dre come up with stuff, man. I'm sitting here all day trying to find a little stuff, make sure it sounds right. Yep. Shit. Yup. It's a trip. You got to be in here all day to see how we do it. And every project they produced with Ruthless went gold, double, or triple platinum. And the money was finally starting to come in like DJ Yella wanted it to. One afternoon, Easy e called Yella and asked him to take a ride with him. Easy took him to a car lot and bought him both brand new Suzuki Jeeps. And a few months later, Yella got his first big check for $75,000. NWA was becoming the biggest rap group in the world and the most controversial. And they call their number one album Niggas for Life. If you consider that offensive, brace yourself. You may be in for a shock. They were labeled the world's most dangerous group but all this controversy only added to N.W.A.'s success. This is the number one album in the United States. And uh, as I looked at it uh, and I talked to the gentleman from Billboard, he said this is the filthiest album ever in the history of the Billboard charts to go to number one. Their album sold over a million copies the same year it came out, and they sold out shows across the country. But while DJ Yellow was okay with the money he was making, not everyone in the group was. When it came time to sign their record contracts, Ice Cube didn't sign, and shortly after, Cube left N.W.A. Two years later, Dr. Dre also left. The day Dr. Dre left, he called DJ Yella, and all he said on the phone was, I'm gone, you coming? Yella was caught in the middle. Dre had been the one who had brought Yella into N.W.A. But Easy e and DJ Yella had become like family over the years. Easy even asked Yella to be his son's godfather. DJ Yella never did give Dre a formal answer. Instead, he just stayed where he was at, with Easy e at Ruthless Records. And now, it was just him and Easy. Everyone else in the group was gone. And when the disc records started coming out back and forth between Ice Cube, Easy e and Dr. Dre, Yella chose to stay out of it completely. He had remained friends with all of them, so he never took sides. After Ice Cube and Dr. Dre's departure from N.W.A., Ruthless Records continued making albums with DJ Yella as the producer, and the money was still coming in. 
but now, Yellow was spending money faster than he could make it. He'd get a six-figure check from Ruthless and spend it in under a year. He went on shopping sprees and vacations. He bought three homes, a yacht, Rolex watches, jet skis, guns, and motorcycles. But what DJ Yella loved buying most was cars. From 1989 to 1997, he bought over 30 different brand new cars. Women were also still a big part of his life. That life eventually caught up with him when he fathered two children by two different women at the exact same time. This caused him to spend more money. To supplement his income, DJ Yella started making adult movie DVDs. He went about producing movies the same way he produced music. He filmed and directed all the movies himself, added the background music, and did all the editing. Yella made over 300 adult movies. And just like the albums he produced, his adult movies have sold millions of copies. In 1994, DJ Yella was living good, making adult movies, producing music for Ruthless Records, and spending money. For his birthday in December, Easy e threw Yella a big birthday dinner party. At the time, neither one of them knew it would be where they took their last photo together. Three months after Yella's birthday dinner, Easy e died. DJ Yella was the only NWA member who attended Easy's funeral. After Easy es death, DJ Yella lost all passion for making music. He quit producing albums and went to making adult movies full time. A year later, Easy es wife, who was now CEO of Ruthless Records, asked Yella to put together an album of unreleased Easy e songs. And just like that, Yella was back to music. While working on Easy es album, DJ Yella was offered a solo record deal by an independent record label. Yella had never rapped before. They trying to give me yeah, a rap, I don't want to rap. But agreed to do it. I might do it at this break out. At least once. His first and only solo album was released in 1996, an album he dedicated to his late friend, Eazy-E. By 2010, the internet had taken over and the buying and selling of adult DVD movies was out, so no money was coming in. Yella also wasn't producing music like he did in previous years, and all the money he had earned from every album he spent. He had to file for bankruptcy and start selling his property. Times got so bad that at one point, he became homeless. After hitting rock bottom, DJ Yella's old friend, Dr. Dre, who he had only seen a few times over the years, invited him to his house. Dre gave Yella some money to help him get back on his feet. Yella didn't even have to ask for it. A similar situation happened with Ice Cube. After not seeing each other for 17 years, Ice Cube sent DJ Yella money to get back into DJing again. Yella hadn't DJed since working at the club in 1987. It was now 2013. Yella was married and heavily involved in the church. His life was on a better path, and he decided to get back to doing what started it all. Ice Cube's money helped him buy the DJ equipment he needed to be able to do that. DJ Yella started DJing all over the world. He also started doing shows with Easy es sons, Lil Easy e and E3. Then, in 2015, the NWA movie Straight Outta Compton came out grossing over $200 million. And in 2016, the group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The group of friends from Compton, California had went from a small studio in Easy es mother's garage to multi-platinum recording artists to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. After doing all that, for Yella, there was only one more thing to do. Write a book. In 2021, DJ Yella shared his story in his book titled Straight Outta Compton. In the book, DJ Yella tells untold stories of his time with NWA. He reveals personal details about himself, including the childhood trauma that changed his life. He goes over the numerous women he was with throughout his career 
and he writes about the last conversation he had with Eze. He also shares that he wouldn't have gotten to where he is today without God. And today, DJ Yella is a producer, author, husband, father, and a deacon in his church. And he's still the legendary DJ for the world's most dangerous group. <laughs>